in Psalms 103, starting in verse 1, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. As I look at that, it makes me think of us many times. We go, we look for a job. And the first thing we want to know is what benefits in that job. How is it going to help me in certain, certain ways? We want to know what we can get out of it. It's the same way about an insurance policy. You go get an insurance policy where it's on your family home, a car, whatever it is. You don't want to know what kind of benefits in it for you if something happens. Well, the psalmist said in Psalm 68 and 19, Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Have you ever sat down and thought, about the benefits that we get from God. And the Bible said in my text, 103 and verse 2, forget not His benefits. I am a firm believer here this morning that every good thing come down from the Father. <clears throat> As we think about it here today, He gives you every breath of air that you breathe. Without Him, we would get nowhere. He gives us what health that we have. He gives us our jobs. Everything that a man has, God has loaned that to you. But many times we forget that. And we look to this world for the things we stand in need of. And we need to be looking to the Lord. And thanking Him for everything that comes our way. One of the things that we get from God it's the forgiveness of our sins. He said in Psalms, verse 3 of 103, Who forgiveth all thy iniquities? If we ask Him sincerely, He forgive us of all our sins. And if we did not receive nothing else from God, that would be worth it all to first serve Him. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 30 and verse 31, He said, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus that you slain and hanged on a tree. 
him had God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior and to forgive the repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sin. Even the people that had crucified him, he was dying for them. Ephesians 1 and 7, he said, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. You know, you and I, we might try everything in the world to get our lives straightened out. But you can't do it. The only way that you'll ever get straight is through Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sin. Remember what was said in Acts chapter 13 and verse 37 39. But he whom God had raised again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, man and brethren, that through this man is preached in you the forgiveness of sin. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. I noticed in the Sunday school book it said something about people living by the Ten Commandments. There ain't no way that you can keep the Ten Commandments. That's let you and I recognize the need that we need Jesus Christ for. I said all time and ruin the commandments. There's one of them if you could keep, you would have no trouble with the rest of them. As I love thy Lord God with all thy heart, with all thy strength, with all thy strength, and with all thy understanding. If we done that and kept that commandment, we wouldn't have a bit of trouble with the rest of them. But we failed him and put him first in our life. Another benefit that we get from the Lord that some people do not recognize is the healing. I know that we got doctors. And I know that there are times we need to go to the doctors. But I also know that God uses them also. Without the hand of God, that medication would be like getting a shot of water. The doctors do their job and God do the healing. The psalmist said in verse 3 of 103, who healeth all thy diseases. Man can't do it. Medication can't do it. But God can use just anything He wants to to heal it. Matthew 4 and 23 said, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. But in the process of it, it said, and healing all manners of sickness and all manner of diseases among the people. He did it then, he can do it now. And he did do it then, and he is still doing it now. Hebrews 13, 8 said, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and is forever. He don't change. We're the ones that change. We forget Him on many, many different things. 
but he's always there with us. Listen what it said in James 5 and 13 through 15. It says, If any among you afflicted, let him pray. And if any merry, let him sing psalms. Any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise him up, and if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. In other words, if you're sick, call the leaders of the church. Call God's people. And put your trust in God and let them follow the scriptures in the Bible. He's still in the healing business. He's still answering prayer. But I wonder how many today has even prayed for the service here this morning. We neglect to pray and to study. And He'll crown us with love and kindness in verse 4 of the 103rd chapter of Psalms. It said, Who redeemed a life from destruction, crowneth thee with love and kindness and tender mercy. He hath pulled our soul out of the depths of hell. He hath forgiven her such sin. And has moved it just as far as east from the west. But sometimes we forget that and leave the Lord behind. Jeremiah 31 and 3, listen to what he said. The Lord had a appeared of old unto me, saying, Yet I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Even back when he hanged on the cross at Calvary, I believe we was on his mind. He loved us before that we was ever born into the world. 1 John 4 and 19 said we love Him because He first loved us. When we recognize what God has done, not only is there the benefit of love, there is the mercy of the Lord. He endures a long time with us sometimes. The Bible says in Psalms 103 and verse 8, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Psalms 103 and 11, For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. 1 Peter 1 and 3, the Bible tells us, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Psalms 52 and 8, He said, I am like a green olive tree, thee in the house of God. I trust in the mercies of God forever and ever. I tell you, there is no place like the house of God to me. I love church. And I love the fellowship between God's people. It is intended for you and I to fellowship together to have a concern and a love for each other. 
And there is the benefit of knowing that He satisfies us. I tell you, if you're really, really walking with God, you can be a satisfied person. Psalms 103 and 5 said, Who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? It don't only tells us to not to forget the benefits of God, but He said He load us with benefits every day. How true that is. He gives you and I strength to be in the house of God here today. He protected you while you came here. And He's looked over. And He looked over this congregation by keeping them healthy in this time of turmoil. And I'm so thankful for that. The congregation has helped its number. It's amazing. But God, He's in amazing work if you just trust Him. I just can't wait till we get this building ready and get the roof on it and the concrete down. We'll have us a singing in there and let her ring. We might even call in some special singers. We'll ever let him let Joe play her little tambourine game. Yeah. Celebrate what God has done for us. We're the only church that I've ever known of the Association of the Baptists that has not called every church in the association to get funds from them to build a church. That's amazing. I'm the, this is the only church I know of in the association that is right now debt free. That's amazing. That's a blessing from God. If you look back and see what God has done for this place, it's amazing. New carpet, new pews, new lights, new doors. Acre of ground, new roof, new parking lot, new pews, everything. Many souls have been led to Jesus Christ. Amen. It's been unreal how God has blessed us. We have come from nothing to a strong congregation. And I'm proud of you. But it'll get stronger and stronger if you'll not forget the benefits that God has laid upon you. Be thankful every day for what God has done. Psalms 105, 38, 40 said, Egypt was glad when they departed from the fear of them that fell upon them. And he spread a cloud for them, a covering in a far gate light in the night. And the people asked, and he brought quail and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He's furnished us when we had nothing to furnish ourselves but ourselves. It's amazing. He fed these people when there was no food out in a dry desert, he gave them water when it's out in the desert. They give them a cloud to shade them of a day and a fire so they could see by night to travel. Amazing. If He did it then, He can do it now. Right. So just trust in Him. Right. If you're here today and you've fallen short, find you an altar and start praying where God can use you.